So career planning. So I was asked to look at career planning really from the perspective of pre-registration um, candidates, prospective students. Um, but actually, um, if you're not, if you're a qualified midwife and you're anywhere along the spectrum, I'll catch up to you. So don't worry. There'll be something here for everyone. And I just thought this picture really spoke to me. And I can't remember what the game is called, but it's one of those games of chance, right? And so career planning should not be left to chance. And that was the idea around this first picture. So hopefully by the end of this, um, you'll understand why. So the first question that, um, and, and I was discussing this last week actually with somebody, why a graduate midwifery programme? Um, and I'm sure a lot of students now who are going through their semester two assessments and when we you know, interview candidates, maybe a lot of them are thinking, well, why do we have to study for a degree? Because midwifery is very skills based. Mm. And so what I did is I had a look at our, um, our new course specifications. And um, so obviously they're on the NMC standards and they are made from the perspective because this is our new curriculum. And at the end of the course, midwives need to be able to develop to act as leaders and change agents and be aware of the significance of innovation, creativity, the best available evidence in evaluation and development of woman-centred care and maternity services. So we need to be able to promote collaborative working with our service users and all the people that we work with, interdisciplinary and multi-agency, to, um, to provide you know, contemporary midwifery practice. And we need to develop midwives who recognise their own strengths through reflection and exercise responsibility for their own professional and career development. And so this session is really something that, that people need to think about, really, on coming into midwifery, where would they like to be in so many years' time? And in order to meet those um, standards, the NMC standards, if we remember, so it's not just about the skills, but you will be responsible, and the RCN wrote, you will be responsible for the primary coordination of care or of universal care for pregnant, labouring, and postnatal women, providing support and guidance. And appropriate referral and I always say that the midwife is like the gatekeeper and we've heard evidence haven't we from Ockenden that if we don't use those gatekeeping skills appropriately for women who require additional care then care is not going to be as it should be for those women so every woman comes through our hands but we need to be able to recognize when women need additional care. Um, so it's not only about the day-to-day -day things that we do as a midwife, but it's about those excellent ongoing communication and problem-solving skills especially um, that are required to meet these NMC proficiencies uh, from the day that we qualify as midwives. So moving on then. So if you go to the RCM um, I learn. There is a um, there is a a, a resource um, called the Career um, Pathway, and actually, if you click into there and if you click on Education, you actually see me um, and a little bit about myself and my career in there. So there's a little bit of a case study, but actually, they um, have mapped out, if you like, um, the types of areas of um, where you can go in midwifery. And as Sue said, midwifery, it's not just about being a midwife. It opens so many different doors. And here I've kind of mapped out the areas that you can go with. Now, you would think that midwife would be at the beginning, but actually midwifery is central to all of these different careers that you see here. So we've got our clinical practice. We've got education, which I'm in. There's research and then there's management. And just want to say that um, when I was looking for sort of these relevant pictures, um, I've got a colleague here who's uh, pictured here with one of our students. 
And also this little group of midwives down here was one of the, it's actually where I did my training um, as a student. So these are all of the midwives that I actually worked with. So I just found that really amazing that um, I found that online. And of course, our chief um, midwifery officer that we can see here. So what pathway? And it's not that this pathway is linear. So it's not that you start off in practice and then you go, you know, you move up to research, you move into management and then potentially go into education. It's actually, you know, there is no linear process here. It's about where your passion lies and what it is you feel you are being pulled to, um, to experience and to work in. So I want to start with um, clinical practice. Now, clinical practice will cover everything, really, from being a band five midwife, so that's a newly qualified midwife, to being a consultant midwife. Um, and I would say that um, you can only decide what is right for you right now. It's not about saying, well, so-and-so did X, Y, and Z, and this is what I should do, because you have your own families, you have your own responsibilities. Remember that when you come into midwifery, you're not this newly formed person. You are a person with skills and knowledge and transferable skills with, with whatever you've done. You may have been caring for children at home. You may have been caring for a parent. You may have been caring for a relative. You might have been out in the world of work. You might have studied another degree. So you are already a formed person when you come into midwifery. And the reason that you've come into midwifery is important. And you need to remember and hold on to that so that you can think, OK, what do I want to do now that I've qualified? And to try to set yourself some three and five year goals. I think it's important to set those goals, whether you reach them or not, but also to check in with those goals to see where you are. Um, it's important to also explore other roles within midwifery. Um, and what, you know, and even if you don't think you want to be a particular specialist or whatever, it's always good to look at job descriptions and actually to view their person specifications. Um, because we, what we do is we look at them and we measure ourselves against those personal specifications and we say, yes, this means me. But actually, what you should be measuring yourself against is not only the essentials, but the desirables. And think to yourself, these are desirable and I, these are the things I need to work beyond in order to really put my myself ahead of the field. And not only are you thinking about what job that you might do, so look on NHS jobs and think about all the different fields that you might go into, all the different specialities. So think about where you've come in. You might think about um, teenage pregnancy, you might think about safeguarding, so supporting women who have complex social needs and require additional um, care, midwifery care. What is your passion? What is it that drew you to midwifery in the first place? And what is it do you think that's going to keep you here as a midwife? Seek some secondment opportunities. So these are opportunities where you can um, still have your job as a midwife and still be paid as a midwife, but you're actually going to do another job that allows you to develop those desirable and additional skills that you might not have. And that will then um, go onto your CV and um, will, again, put you ahead of the crowd. Get involved in audit projects um, and guideline development. It's important that we can understand how research gets into practice and how our services are audited and the standards that we are um, measured against so that when it comes to setting standards and um, developing guidelines, you are aware of the nuances and the discussions that happen that you might think happen beyond your level, but that's not what it is at all. And, you know, from the time that you qualify and, and as a student, 
you should be looking to see, okay, what's the audit? What are, what evaluation projects are going on? And how does this guideline get into practice from uh, research? And from an early start, I would encourage students to think about uh, funding opportunities. So now when you have an elective placement, you can apply for um, uh, awards. So you can write essays and get awards. And if you get yourself into that um, process of applying for things, then as you qualify as a midwife and as you seek to develop your own skills, you can then seek further funding opportunities so that you can develop those leadership opportunities that you might want to take a course in perinatal mental health you might want to um, you know seek out a safeguarding um, you know support uh, role um, and you know think about sort of uh, women who have additional uh, needs so that you can broaden your horizons because there's nothing worse than qualifying and you become a midwife and then it's like okay what do I do now and I will always say to people that before you know it you'll have been qualified five years and the time will have gone and you will think well gosh what have I done and if I can give you an example of sort of my um you know what's happened with me is that um you know I've done uh, jobs and then I've broken and sort of thought about education so whenever I've gotten myself a different role if, even if it's been um, education um, management even the hypnobirthing um, uh, course that I did um, this was interspersed with developing a skill and thinking about okay what is the job that I want to do what is the education that I need so that before I've gone for a particular role I know that I am going to fit the criteria on paper. How I present myself on the day is a different thing altogether, but at least I can meet those person and desirable um, qualifications. And so, so your band find midwife, um, I actually looked up some sort of desirable um, skills, um, some essential skills really for um, a band five midwife. Um, so, um, sorry, a person spec for band six. So team working, evidence of teaching, IT skills, budget awareness at, at band six, understanding the role of research and development, ability to prioritize and demonstrate time management and organizational skills, advanced life support in obstetrics. So as a band six midwife, so we know that midwives move from band five to band six after their preceptorship period, but look what's required of you at band six and for consultant midwifery evidence of research experience experience working in um, an academic institute experience of public speaking and published material so if we think about all of the different roles that can occur between band five and consultant midwife and there are many in myriad um yeah it, it it's like the sky's the limit, really. So if you want to move from clinical practice to education, now for me, that was a really big step. And I sort of had my feet in both camps for a very long time. So I was a clinical practice um, facilitator or a lecturer in practice. And I was employed by the higher education uh, institute and by the trust and it was a great role because you kept your clinical skills and you did some teaching and marking and gained those skills but actually if you want to take that um, you know final leap into education then start off small and start off early so we know that in midwifery teaching is synonymous and actually I didn't even realize I wanted to go into education as a midwife but what I did was enjoyed doing parent education and so I dipped my toe in teaching in that way and when you start to get positive feedback it can then you can then think okay well maybe this is something that I can do. Um, plan your uh, professional development opportunities and develop your teaching skills so not only are you teaching 
the women that you're looking after, but you're also thinking about the students that are coming through uh, your trust, because we know that uh, part of that is supporting students. So consider your own learning experiences as students. Think about what helped you or what helps you, and then think about how you can support a student to develop. Get involved in research projects. You're going to hear that a lot from me in this 15 minutes. Research is the basis of all we do. And if we don't really get involved in research, reading research and being able to critique research, then we can't be in conversations with our um, consultant colleagues, and I mean midwifery consultant colleagues, our lead midwives, and our obstetric colleagues, um, we can't be in a, the same conversation with them if we don't actually understand what research is and how it impacts on our practice. And again, at this point, you need to be seeking funding for your development opportunities. And that is from an education perspective, uh, thinking about PhD, as a, a not a newly qualified midwife, because part of the PhD process is that you've you've practiced for a few years, but not a lot of years. Um, so you can uh, get funding for PhD product projects. You can get Mary Seacole awards, and you can go to the Iolanthe Trust. These are a few places where you can apply for funding. Funding is not something that is your right. Um, you will get. Um, sort of mandatory training within the trust. But um, if you're going to try to get yourself to a master's degree and then get yourself to um, a PhD, then you have to look for some support for that. And so planning early is the advice that I would give you for that. So if you want to think about research. Now, I think if I said this to my current students, they'd all groan and go, oh no, not research. But actually, um, there are some people who, for, for them, research is um, really exciting. And I also consider, you know, if you're the type of person that um, has a particular, you know, you like things in a certain way, you're very ordered, you're very process driven, then definitely research is for you and consider at least trialing um, a research post. Again, I looked on um, NHS Jobs website and there were research, uh, midwifery research jobs going. And as part of that, um, you um, need to have um, knowledge of um, good uh, clinical practice guidelines. You need to know about the um, clinical, uh, the uh, research governance framework um, and the medicines for, I'm sorry, but these little things on the side are, are, are interfering with a few of my presentations. So uh, excuse me if I don't read the words on the end, but I'm sure you can see them. Um, so you need to know about research and ethics and, um, you know, how to treat clients when um, they may well be involved in your research projects. So, again, this is about forward thinking. This is about saying if I'm going to have a career in research, I will need to get um, a course in uh, clinical practice, uh, good clinical practice um, and understand the governance framework. So, again, that you're ready to take a position when you are ready to take up a position it's nothing worse than going for an interview and someone saying yeah, but you're not you, you didn't meet this criteria um, so um, th find this out and th think about these for yourselves but also from a basic point of view is that you also need to have good IT skills and to have knowledge of office packages now we think today we're all sort of IT savvy here we are um, on zoom but I know when it becomes time for students to submit work over, you know, uh, on Moodle, for instance, that's when it all sort of cracks up and, you know, IT skills are not as uh, honed as they should be and office skills, MS Word and things like that are not as honed as they should be. So if you need to take a course, take a, a preparatory course in IT skills so that, again, you can work a spreadsheet and you can, um, you know, produce documents that look like uh, quality. And again, 
seek funding opportunities. Um, there are PhD, paid PhD or stipend PhD opportunities available for midwifery nursing and midwifery. And these are in the National Institute of Healthcare Research. Um, and you can study a PhD full time. I had a student actually who qualified, um, came into midwifery quite late and as soon as they qualified, actually got funded for a PhD and is now, you know, PhD um, doctor. So it's really um, fulfilling if that's what you want to do. Think about it earlier in your career. And then once you, you know, um, have got sort of research under your belt, you can actually branch out into other areas. So you don't necessarily need to stay within midwifery. You can go into other areas of the NHS and bring your knowledge and skills that you've learned back to midwifery to improve care and outcomes for women, because that's ultimately what um, being a, a midwifery researcher is about. And then so carrying on really from clinical practice, when you get to your band seven or your band eight and you're a lead midwife, you might want to then go into management. So from your lead midwife, you can go all the way up to being your director of midwifery or your, um, you know, your uh lead midwife, uh, not lead midwife, your uh, head of midwifery, head of, um, you know, and you can go all the way. So, and something Sue was saying earlier, and I thought that was quite relevant, is that, that you have to have political awareness because you have to understand what um, the, um, the pressures are on maternity and on the staff. You have to be a transformational leader. And that's something that the RCM really put at the centre of their careers ladder is that leadership from band five to director of midwifery is required at all levels. And we need to be able to be leaders. Um, and I think probably my time might be running out. So um, you need to have highly developed skills um, and in advancing midwifery practice and having evidence based. So I've got some take home messages. So some a bit of repetition, but that's because I want you to remember these, these really important aspects of career planning. So use the skills developed during your graduate midwifery program. We teach them because the NMC asks us to produce midwives with these basic uh, proficiencies, which will help you to improve the care for women. Your ongoing development is in your hands. Plan your master's degree early in your career, and then you can start thinking about your PhD. Set yourself time-oriented goals and review, review these frequently. Know the desirable qualities for the role that you want so that you can outskill your competitors. Take advantage of experiences that will help to develop uh, the required additional knowledge and skills that you're going to need. Funding is not automatic. So you're not going to be paid by your trust to get all of your education. So you need to plan this into your goal setting and get involved in audit and research because these skills will be required at all levels of midwifery. I've added some uh, resources here for you to use and to find additional information. I also um, embedded some of the job specifications here just for you to look at. So band five, consultant midwife, and uh, there's, a, there's a director of midwifery going if anybody's interested. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, some useful links to for the Darcy Fellowship that's run at LSBU. Um, and that is me. And just remember, the world needs midwives now more than ever. So that's you. Thank you.